human space flight is complicated, risky, yet humans want to explore outer space. India is sending its second astronaut or Gaganyatri to space very soon. And it could well be Group Captain Shubhanshu Shukla. But I have with me a pioneer from Israel, astronaut Ethan Stibbe. He flew on Axiom 1 mission, like Shubhanshu is flying on Axiom 4. And Eaton paid for the flight from his pocket. Shubhanshu's flight, India's taxpayers are paying for that. That makes Eaton very special. He's now a flourishing businessman, a venture capitalist, and also has interests in education and also in water resources of India. Thanks a lot for speaking to me. Thank you, fellow. Ethan, how was it like to fly on the Axiom 1 mission? We, as the first private astronaut mission, were determined to prove that it is possible, it is beneficial, and we should open the way for future private missions. It was a challenge because I had to build the whole mission for myself. I had to make the combination of science, of uh, education, of art, and build the whole work plan. I had no space agency supporting me, which was an exciting uh, venture. We had a, a management team. They put together a, a whole set of our call, call for proposals of what can an astronaut do. We got ideas from children, from scientists, from philosophers, and assembled a great mission um, that many, many people in Israel, maybe the whole public, uh, was involved in a space mission. You were Israel's second astronaut. How was the first astronaut mission for Israel? Ilan Ramon, the first Israeli astronaut, was on the Columbia STS-107 mission. Uh, I, he was a good friend of mine. We are still in very close relationship with his family. And uh, in 2003, they launched in the shuttle Columbia for 14 days in space, together with Chawla, uh, Indian-American. Kalpana Chawla. Yes. And they did a lot of science and uh, educational missions. Unfortunately, they did not come back. They did not survive the entry into space, into, back into Earth. And that was a very sad moment. So the Israeli public sentiment to human spaceflight was always very delicate. So my intention in my mission was to change that sentiment and open again the excitement, the curiosity about space, the uh, uh, amazing possibilities of of uh, children and scientists to take part in this International Space Station, which is a huge platform. It's an expensive labor laboratory that can offer so much to the, to the scientists and to everyone. So how did you prepare for it? And what motivated you? Before that, let me ask you, what motivated you personally to go to space and also to pay from your own pocket. The motivation was really to change the sentiment of the public, to create excitement about space, because sp space is unknown. It's endless. We are just a small part of space. Once we are in the station and look back to Earth, I think the most exciting part is to see the atmosphere, the slim strip of 100 kilometers that without this atmosphere, life would not exist on Earth and we would be like the Moon or Mars. And to look at that slim strip around Earth and imagine the slim uh, uh, crest of Earth, which is again 100 kilometers below us, so all life and vegetation 
exists in these 200 uh, kilometers of, uh, of oxygen and, uh, and life. So we have only one home. <laughs> exactly. We have, this is our space station and I would say that uh, the International Space Station is like a microcosmos, I would say, maybe a nanocosmos of Earth. A place where international astronauts come and work for months and cooperate. And it is the intention of each one of the astronauts, even though each one has a whole work program in front of him to follow, it is the intention of each and of the whole crew to help every one of the astronauts succeed and finish the day with a smile. Because one sad astronaut can affect the whole crew on board. True. Why did you decide to pay from your own pocket? Because I believe uh, it's worthwhile. It's like a donation. Uh, all the industries, ac academies, the hospitals, they all benefited from the opportunity to send science to space. We insisted that each of the scientists does the, I will do the science, but he must plan an educational program that I perform in space. For example, I did a CRISPR uh, DNA uh, experiment. CRISPR-Cas. Yes. Um, Gene editing. <laughs> exactly. Amazing. Uh, in space. In space, mainly for diagnostics. Wow. Because there's no hospital in space, you have to diagnose uh, issues of of uh, astronauts when they travel, they have longer travels to Mars, it can take months, long months. So the idea was that each science, scientific experiment will also uh, come together with a lesson for students, for uh, young students, for academy. Um, let's say uh, if we did lenses from polymer, we created the first time lenses from a liquid then we had a lesson to show the uh, face tension of liquids so the students can understand what's going on. Sure. And liquids behave very interesting in space. Sure. How was the ride on Falcon 9 Crew Dragon? And you were the first commercial crew. <laughs> so was it difficult? It was very, very exciting because we approached the tower, the launch tower the launch pad. We see this rocket 75 meters up there. Going higher and higher. Yes, and the small spacecraft on top of it. Then we got into the elevator where all the Apollo teams, crews, and all the shuttle crews went up this uh, uh, launch pad 39A. True. Went up the elevator, got, got into the Dragon Two spacecraft. Space. Yes, and then we have three hours. Three hours where all the preparation, mental and physical preparation are, are starting. It's relaxing time because there's not much to do, but you hear all the valves and the gas and the fuel tanks filling and you understand that the rocket is waking up, is coming to life. And then they shut the hatch and then a very calm person counts down like 10, 9, and our excitement. <laughs> so can grows. you hear the countdown inside? Oh yes, we count down, we shout with them and we're all excited and we're praying that nothing causes a cancel or a scrub or we have to sure. uh, delay. So once a countdown happens, then we know that we're going. Go for launch, we launch. And the ride is much smoother than I expected. It's smooth. The G built up carefully up to about 4G. Yeah, I'm told 4G, correct. Within three minutes, we're out of the atmosphere. Three minutes. And then the, the rocket disconnects, returns to Earth, and the spacecraft continues to, to accelerate from zero to 28,000 kilometers per hour within about 12, 13 minutes. And That's the, quite a ride. It's quite a ride. It's beautiful. At first you see Earth from the window, you know, going, getting smaller, uh, going away. You see the coast of Florida and then the darkness of space. How was life on the International Space Station? 
You were busy, you did many experiments, but yes. how is general life on the International Space Station? It's very well organized, I would say. It's, we live according to UTC, London yes. time. Wake up at 6 o'clock, 7.30 we have a brief. All the astronauts gather and we go through all the stations from uh, Tokyo, Moscow, uh, Germany, uh, Houston and Huntsville. So we get brief of the day, with the special events and the planning of the day, then each astronaut goes to his work according to the schedule. It's, a, it's a challenging because you cannot change anything. If you don't live up to the timetable, then you have to delay. The ground crew will follow what you're doing and if you miss something because you were thirsty or, or you missed it, you were just late for something, then they have to move it to another day. You cannot push the timetable forward. You have to commit everything on time. Were you able to sleep on the International Space Station? Well? Oh, yes, I slept very well. So it's, Better than uh, Earth? <laughs> well, it's an experience. The first time you, you go to sleep floating, right? There's no gravity, so your hands are like that. And um, The first time you close your eyes and you feel you're still in motion, but then uh, you say, okay, I'll fall asleep in motion, that's fine. And you just fall asleep and uh, after a long day, and uh, the day ends at about 7, we have a debrief and 9 o'clock there's a lights out and, uh, and the weekends are cleaning and uh, we continued working on the weekends as well because our mission was planned for 10 days. Eventually it was extended to 17 days because of weather issues on the landing uh, uh, sites and a Russian spacewalk which took place and uh, that was exciting. We could sit in the window and watch the Russians uh, wow. outside. And you had some extra days in space. We had seven extra days so we could lucky. complete. Very lucky, yes. Sunita Williams had almost eight <laughs> months extra. Was right, she very lucky? Right. She was super lucky. <laughs> I spoke to her when she was in space. And uh, because she was in the class with our first astronaut, Ilan Ramon, uh, and I spoke to her and she was happy. She and uh, Butch were really excited about the time. She had another spacewalk. And as such an experienced astronaut, she was the commander of the International yes, Space yes, Station she was for a long period. Correct, correct. How does Israel look like from space? Israel uh, is part of the Middle East, which has great contrast between the yellow, brownish desert and the blue sea. And, and there's the, the uh, Red Sea and the Mediterranean and you see very beautiful contrast uh, in that region. But Israel is very small. It's uh, uh, surrounded with so many beautiful uh, uh, landscapes. How does India look like? If Israel is small, <laughs> India is large like a subcontinent. How does it India is. look like? India is beautiful. I, because I have some uh, investments in India water sector, then I try to take uh, videos and photos of the projects in Karnataka mainly. And uh, um, I planned, the, you have to plan in advance when you fly over because it takes about five, six minutes and you're away. Sure. Uh, so you have to be lucky with the weather. And uh, unfortunately, I had many times a cloudy weather and it was difficult to take very sharp pictures of the of the sites that I wanted to but it's beautiful it's a beautiful continent you see it at night you see the big cities you see the the Himalaya uh, darkness at night it's a very very beautiful uh, view do you like the time that India and Israel are great friends oh I both know that. on earth and in space we yeah. have common programs in space is that a, something as an Israeli astronaut you, you savor and like? Oh yes, I, I'm uh, very aware of the close relationship between Israel and uh, India. It's difficult to compare, you know, because the population of Israel is like Ahmedabad, right? Uh, <laughs> it is <laughs> very India, small compared to India that. is, a, is a, the largest country in the world today, and there's a lot of uh, cooperation potential that can develop from the in space and from space about uh, remote sensing, earth observation, following of thunderstorms, which are very uh, dangerous in, uh, in uh, many places in the world. 
So this is this is one of the missions I did actually. As a so did your did your mission by Axiom One lead to a certain awakening in Israel? Yes, yes. There was a, a excitement. Uh, the government is speaking about sending an astronaut. I don't think they have succeeded to allocate the budget yet, but there is an intention. The Minister of uh, Technology mentioned that we're planning to send a lady astronaut wonderful. for training, <laughs> which, which can be very wonderful. I hope it happens. We will support it. We created a, a space forum. We created a, a campus for students in each university so they can go into uh, learn about space and about the sector and not only science students but also humanities, philosophers, authors because if we want to excite people we need poets in space. Yes. We need teachers in space because they can bring back and express the, the excitement much better than simple astronauts. Well we also had an ast journalist and a pop singer right. becoming an astronaut <laughs> very soon. So space is becoming accessible. That's true. It will, ho hopefully, Boeing will continue developing and hopefully India will develop a, a human space flight a, program. A program and have a, a spacecraft that can take humans to space and it will be more accessible to everyone because when you see a rocket launch with humans inside, you cry. It's so emotional. Thanks a lot for speaking to me, Ethan. Thank you, Palo. My, my, my pleasure, and thanks for giving us the time. It's so touching to see somebody going to space, and not on taxpayers' money, <laughs> but on personal money, and then creating an a aura about that mission. And you created an aura, not just in Israel, but across the world. Thank you very much. Paul. What a wonderful feeling it has left. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that was Israeli astronaut Ethan Stibbe telling us how exciting it was for him to go to space. He has also had interaction with Group Captain Shubhanshu Shukla. As he was on Axiom 1 and Shubhanshu was on Axiom 4, you will have more details on that. This is a teaser. With Camera person Xavier Thomas in New Delhi, Pallav Bagla for NDTV.